being involved in media production gives one an opportunity to involve himself with different individuals who are talented and have brilliant ideas and learn different concepts so that they can be able to give you the imagery that many of us are able to learn many things from. I'm here now with Mr. Jonathan Sisko and Mr. Jamal Hall, who are producers, uh, directors, and people in our community that are working to get a positive message out in our community and to be able to structure different opportunities in which we can be able to enjoy um, projects that uh, we can be able to know that it came from our community. So the grassroots effort has is, is become so profound. A number of uh, well-spoken, talented individuals have been able to uh, share with me many of the ways in which they have been successful in what they do. And I'd like to welcome and thank the two of you for coming in and, and giving us an opportunity to share with you, our audience, in regard to uh, your success and, and how you can be encouraging to others to give them an opportunity to know that they have an, a reality that they can look forward to as well. Thank you very much for coming on the set. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Cisco. I think that uh, our relationship started before Mr. Hall. But Mr. Hall, I heard about you and the incredible work that you've been doing. Uh, you have a number of different film productions under your belt. Why don't you share with us some of those uh, projects that you're working with? Um, I'm the director and CEO of uh, Dynamite Films. Um, we progressed from doing lots of music videos, about 40 music videos, to short films, to now our full feature independent film. And that's what we're currently working on right now. And the film is called Umi, mm -hmm. and it's about grandmothers being mothers again. Mm -hmm. And we're just looking to that field and um, source of where grandmothers are just taken for granted. Um, this, you know, oh, she's going to cook, she's going to clean, take the kids to school, and Everybody else is taking it for granted. We're not even realizing that there's a lot they go through. So Umi talks about that uh, one particular grandmother's story mm -hmm. and how much is involved in doing what she does. Wow. Uh, you know, that's, uh, that's pretty incredible. When you talk about the succession from, uh, you know, doing uh, just uh, pretty much uh, music videos uh, and then getting to the established level of a filmmaker, what what are the differences in, in that process? Um, there's a big difference. A lot of times with the music videos, as a director, you might have a say in editing or how the shots look, but pretty much you have to follow what the artist's song is about. So a lot of times, if you're not really into that kind of music or into that the message that they're bringing across, you kind of have to force yourself to do it anyway because you're the director for that artist. That's mm -hmm. what they're paying you for. Mm -hmm. But then when you get into short films, it's more relaying the message. You have your own kind of say what you want to do. But the time frame is much shorter. And um, you got to hit them with key points quickly to keep them interested because they're so short, you really can't get in depth with the characters. So independent film, full, full feature film, um, you have more time to develop character development and really get the characters out there and the audience to relate to the character so they know why they're doing what they're doing inside the movie. So. There's different stages from music video to film, and it's very different. Hmm. Mr. Cisco, you know, thinking about it in terms of the planning and the elements that it comes to creating the production and being a producer, the, the relationship that you have involved with it is, is pretty much in guiding them so that they can have the right kind of elements in order to be successful in the project? Uh, uh, absolutely. I, I was first brought onto the project as um, executive producer to the music portion of the film. Uh, Mr. Hall was, you know, he was appreciative of, you know, uh, I guess some of the resources and the elements and, you know, from my background. And then I was up or upgraded or moved up to um, executive producer for the entire film and have since gone on to becoming a managing partner of Dynamite Films, uh, interim or co-president of that, that company as well. Uh, you know, uh, it's a wealth of resources and experience and knowledge. Um, I offer a lot of advice. Um, Different, you know, different points of views, and just to make sure that the business end of it is all taken care of. Mm. Share with us your background. Well, um, I've been involved in music since I was about uh, 19 years old. It goes back to a friend of mine who was in the NBA, Quan Johnson. He was affiliated with Puff Daddy at the time. Uh, you know, I had left music alone for a while. I went back into retail management, 
been doing that since I was 17 years old. Um, for the last four years or so, I was strategically outlining a plan um, of launching my own company. So effective January 1st of 2010, I launched three companies on my own. It was an Impact Worldwide Entertainment, Impact Worldwide Publishing, and Point Blank Recordings. And the idea, the idea behind that was to create sort of a, an entertainment conglomerate of sorts, whereas, whereas though I had 18 different artists around the country, one in Canada, uh, very successful artists, and um, I wanted to give them a home as, you know, on the record label and also to make sure that, they, that their management interests were uh, secure. And with, with respect to publishing, which is the most critical um, piece of an artist's career, I wanted to make sure that was secured as well. Uh, we, had court, we had courted some attention from Atlantic Records uh, last year and also a, a private entity called Primary Wave Publishing. Mm -hmm. The deal was a proposed $300,000. You know, it wasn't something that was interesting to me at the time, you know, or now. And uh, I have since gone on to manage a bunch of different, you know, celebrities. Um, one of which you know, Rasheen Pet Peppers from the A and E reality show Manhunters, and uh, an international fashion designer, Stacey Angela. Um, and then again, I have uh, cut my artist roster down to nine, which gives me more time to focus on other projects and other uh, entities that I want to, you know, help develop and build. Which is why. I'm so focused on, you know, the development and success of Dynamite Films with this particular project. Yeah, that's really uh, exciting, you know, in terms of the project itself and, you know, the kind of message that you're really trying to bring out of it. You know, Jamal, were you um, interested in this kind of a career uh, when you graduated out of William Patterson? Yes, William Patterson University <laughs> alumnus. Um, well, actually, it's weird. I'm, I have a BFA in art. Okay. And uh, straight out of high school, I mean college, I went um, to become a teacher. That's what I'm doing currently is teaching. But my main, um, what I really want to do is film. Mm -hmm. And so the last four to five years has gotten really serious with that and really want to climb in that. So um, William Patterson helped me out, but I really didn't. I kind of taught myself with the film aspect. Cause, yeah, on the job. And right, like, a right. lot of it, because you find ways of creating and I think that that's where the talent really gets right. to the point where you know you have a pinnacle. Right. And you have your own pedigree, you only have your own brand. Is right. branding important? That's so important. Like, for example, I do certain things in my movies and films that are brands, what I do in terms mm -hmm. of contrast, I use high contrast in my films. Um, I use a lot of pulling out, in and out of focus in a lot. Mm -hmm. And that's just a trend that I try to set for myself. So when somebody's watching it, they say, oh, or Hall made that, or Dynamite Films did that, and that's what I try to do. And you, I guess, obviously, you saw that pattern with some of the other successful, you know, right. uh, productions that have been provided for us to be able to enjoy. Right. Now, looking at it in that fashion, how do you think that this kind of uh, skill is, is, is relevant for individuals to know that they can learn it as well? Right. Um... Well, the most important thing is to teach yourself is homework, homework, your own homework on the internet. Like I spent nights and days just reading about, all right, what's the different kind of camera angles you could use, establishing, panning. Why use panning at this point? Uh, bird's eye view. On uh, this barrier is different. bird's eye view. Right. It's interesting. Right. Yeah, there's certain concepts. Yes. Okay. And, um, but why do you use them? How you, because artistically you want to express what you want to show. Mm -hmm. And, um, my style is a little different because I don't just point and shoot. A lot of urban movies, they just point, say action, and that's it. I try to come from a different angle. I see. So for somebody that's trying to get into it, um, the biz biggest thing is just research and do your own homework and try to follow the certain things you have to follow to be a successful film mm -hmm. in terms of uh, ways to shoot to be taken seriously in the professional world. But other than that, it's just teaching yourself. And when you talk about research, uh, you know, the relativeness of that, the industry itself changes so often. Right. You know, dynamics of that, you know, uh, Jonathan, how do you really position yourself where you know that after it has been uh, produced and is developed and is ready for market, that you can get the right sponsors behind you? Uh, a lot of homework, a lot of homework, um, a lot of research, a lot of networking. Um, and just having a, a, a package or a product that you believe in and being able to get it to the right people. You know, uh, in the development of a film, 
you know, there are, there are a bunch of different, uh, I want to say opportunities, that, you know, different avenues you can pursue. I mean, with respect to this film, you know, um, the director is focused on taking it the independent uh, route, which would consist of film festivals, mm -hmm. you know, things of that sort. Um, movie premieres in different cities. One of our agents was looking to have uh, two Los Angeles locations to premiere the film there as well as New York in the near future, hopefully by the end of the summer. But um, I, I think to answer your question, the best answer I can give is to say that it's a lot of homework, research, networking, and just <laughs> knowing the right people mm -hmm. in most uh, situations. Uh, knowing about the disadvantage that you have in your production process that, you know, financing is something that you're not able to have access to, obviously, because you're not mainstream and you're doing it from a grassroots perspective. Does it really seem more like a Band-Aid approach? Um, well, sort of in a way. Uh, I mean, the hardest thing is, is I call it as a beautiful struggle where you kind of hold dear to your work because you're putting so much of your own funding and money into it. So, um, I mean, in a way, going the independent route, I think it's best that uh, we can't find funding is mm -hmm. to fund yourself. But well, I guess I don't know if I answered your question. Or well, not, you but, did because, okay. like, thinking about it, um, I guess what, what the point that we're making here, because you know we're working together, right, right, stuff, right. right. Don't, don't think we're not working together. And for those of you who are viewing, you know, many of the things that are really important is to have a team working with you so that you can have the opportunity to share those ideas and the things that you don't know. We bounce off of one another so that we can have a real consistent confidence that we know we're going to be focusing on how to make this project successful. But what I'm really thinking about in terms of being independent means that you have total control. Um, yes and no. Really? <laughs> we do have total control, but mm -hmm. as we look on to certain investors, and we learned this process between Cisco and myself, that um, certain people want certain things if they feel that they're contributing into it. Because since we can't really pay everybody and, you know, the actors are no problem because they get into it and they know this is for show for their resume or to have when they're real when they go out. But, like, using businesses and things like that, we went in, and since they're not getting paid up front, there's certain things we could and couldn't do, mm. which kind of changed things a little bit. Mm -hmm. But we negotiated, and uh, John Francisco, being a great negotiator, mm -hmm. helped us out in a lot of situations. Mm -hmm. And looking at that, I guess obviously you have to be firm in wanting to ensure that the integrity of the message is going to be promoted, even though you may have to compromise. Absolutely, and I'm, I'm, I appreciate that. Uh, I, I try to, you know, conduct business as business should be conducted. There are oftentimes, you know, those that may want to have more of an influence in your particular project. And you have to have a sense of integrity. You know, you have to stand for something. And you, you may not get everything you want, but at the end of the day, you know, the goal is to get this film out. And if, if it means a difference between it coming out now or next year, but we, we felt good in knowing that we secured the right investors or the right influences behind us, then that's what it comes down to. Uh, you are able to also reach out and uh, look at uh, ways in which you were promoted. Now, the, uh, the idea of what you're looking at, and hopefully in another couple of weeks, you're going to be having a screening. Yes. Now, you again alluded to how this process really works. Can you just share me the details in terms of the approach now or maybe a timeline that you're going to be working with in the screening process? Well, uh, a timeline would be we want to focus on a lot of marketing, a lot of promotion uh, for the second quarter that we're in right now, spring and summer. Uh, we, for, the f for the first premiere, we chose the city of Patterson. Uh, Jamal Hall has some roots there. I was born in the city of Patterson. And we wanted to make it as big as possible. We wanted to sort of have some of the, the quality that was associated with the last film, which was Lean On Me, back in 1989. Mm -hmm. So we went out, we reached out to some celebrities, Melba Moore, Rasheen Pet Peppers, and some others, uh, to, try to, to sort of bring attention and focus on the arts in the city of Patterson in hopes that they would probably get behind us. Uh, we're looking at or considering an Essex County Newark <clears throat> There's some New York locations that the director wants us to check out, Harlem. And then we want to sort of spring on to the West Coast where, you know, we all know that's cinema heaven in a sense. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we're looking at two, you know, West Coast Los Angeles locations for the premiere as well. 
timeline as far as, you know, I, I can't give you a specific time as to, you know, um, we have to see what the general public wants to do. You know, we make these films for them. And if there's a demand, we're going to definitely meet that demand. Um, if we see that the demand is, uh, you know, uh, decreasing, we may, you know, take the measures to move to DVD. Mm -hmm. You know? But as competitive as it is, are you looking for some opportunities where you can get into some film festivals or things like that? Yes. Um, I, you know, are, are there any specific ones that you might be thinking about that might be relevant to being acceptive to this kind of a production? Um, definitely um, the, the biggest one for us would be the Black um, Filmmakers Film Festival and uh, BET, of course, uh, Florida Film Festivals. And even international film fe film festivals that we're tr definitely trying to get into, and uh, Dynamite Films we belong in a group called Without a Box, mm -hmm. and what they do is they send you uh, film festivals per week, oh, maybe really? ten or eight. So it's like a resource. Without a Box is yes. like a resource that yes. people great. can subscribe to and get information. And the greatest thing about that is once you have the press release, photos for your film, and everything, mm -hmm. they send it off the information for you. Okay. And so it de it's definitely a big, real big help. Definitely. And you know, thinking about. Uh, what you are really trying to do in terms of creating a foundation. The kinds of talent that you're looking for, are they local talent or are you doing it on a national basis? How do you, how do you get people to get to involved with that your productions? Films? Yeah. Uh, I believe the director uh, held several casting calls and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, they had people from as far away as Connecticut that mm -hmm. came out to audition or to at least, you know, uh, participate in the casting process. Um, I mean, the door's open to anyone. The door's open to anyone. And just to add on to what Jonathan was talking about, um, the casting call, now that the film is being promoted, mm -hmm. we're getting calls in left and right, texts, um, inbox, from Facebook, from pe from all over now. People, next next time you do a film, let us know, let us know, let us know. Right. So, I mean, even uh, celebrities that I was shocked, like they want to be in the film that we're creating, you know, next one around. So it's definitely um, growing. Now, and it's interesting when you begin to get individuals who are interested. Is it like a play? Like you can really interchange certain characters and then you know put different images in. Nah. You really nah, you we, have to stay. We gotta stick to the story because um, when I cast, I'm not looking for um, how well they follow the script line by line. I'm looking for how well how well they deliver the emotion that we're mm -hmm. trying to portray. Really. Yes. Like when I shoot a film, it's a little different than other filmmakers. Um, I have a script, and I would give them the script. They study it, and I allow them to not make great drastic changes, but changes where it makes them feel comfortable to be more emotional, to get the message across. Because my thing is reality being real, with the message we're trying to give. Mm. Are those the uh, type of um, ways in which you can see success in a project? Jonathan? I'm sorry? Are no, those kind of the ways that you can see success in a project? Well, I, I'm, I mean, I must be honest. I was not involved in a lot of the the casting, uh, per se. I was involved more of the, you know, the business angle, the marketing, mm -hmm. the promotion, you know, the, uh, the development you know, of different relationships. I wasn't involved in much of the, in, you know, the, I want to say hands-on with respect mm -hmm. to the, the cast. And, well, I asked that question to you to hear that kind of an answer because there are, Different, you know, like there are separations of responsibility. Absolutely. In order for things to be really brought to the existence where you are today with it. But, you know, thinking about it, when you are marketing it and you are creating a business around it, you understanding it and knowing it has a great deal of advantage, wouldn't you say? I, I definitely would agree with that. And so in terms of the way in which you would know the types of opportunities that exist within the production, um, it would be relevant to say that it, it, it pretty much will make it a better opportunity for you to be able to market. Uh, absolutely. I mean, you have to be familiar. You have to believe in the project. And you, you know, I want to say that a lot of aspiring executive producers or managers, you have to first study from some really, really, really good people. Um, with respect to managing, managing has always been something that I felt I was drawn to. And in the process of managing artists, so many doors open up, um, so many conversations, you know, um, so many opportunities. And you sort of, you know, you you mold 
the relationship to where you want it to be. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I want to say that when the time is right, that's when you know you sit down, you go through your tough negotiations, and try to make that impact. Right. So looking for it at uh, how things are really working in the production, um, how do you want us to be able to support you? Um, definitely join us in our um, promotional venues and uh, where we, like John said, we're trying to reach out to Newark, uh, New York, and try to just get out there and try to watch the film, support us on Facebook, on YouTube. Comments are always a great way to uh, support and uh, just show the love, you know, and just make it worth for us to keep striving harder to do what we're doing. And basically just get out there and try to watch it or try to make the events. Or even if you just want to send an inbox saying, hey, I enjoyed the movie. Uh, when's the next one? When can we get out to this? And we'll communicate back and forth with everybody. Well, well definitely. You have a trailer, something that yes. I can be able to show in terms of making people excited about what's going on with it. We're looking forward to giving... Uh, an opportunity for you to be a part of what we're doing in our production process and Jonathan and I have been able to partner in different events and activities that we're going to be working with together and I'm certainly glad that I have now an opportunity to meet you and uh, understand exactly how you are right. and then you can be able to know that we're sincere here at We Care Partners and the Image Profile Report and Grassroots and you know about. what's even called Cool Vibes now. Right. Uh, we're expanding and we're getting more networks involved with what we're doing and we're certainly going to be interested in working with you to provide an awareness to our community that you know the kinds of opportunities that are necessary for us to achieve greatness is going to come from us communicating with one another right. and working through partnerships. So we're very happy that you came here today. We're certainly going to make sure that we do what we can to help qualify that resource that you need. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Appreciate it very much. Very much really appreciate it, man. All right. All right, Jonathan. Thanks again. Thanks for really having me. Appreciate it, man. Great. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Great.